Hey everybody, it's Justice for Comics. Um, it is, what is it, Thursday evening? Um, wanted to review the Marvel solicitations for November. A lot of really good looking books coming out. Um, some funny looking covers. <laughs> yeah, this should be a good time. <laughs> Let's jump on into it. So Marvel solicitations for November. Let's take a look here. So first off is New Mutants. Looks like they're rebooting this again for the, I don't know. Well, you got Hickman writing it, so maybe it'll, obviously he's been well received so far on House of X and Powers of X. Uh, so I might give this a, give this a try. See if it's any good. Um, maybe there'll be some new characters. You're bringing in the classic New Mutants. You got Sunspot, Wolfsbane, Mir uh, Mirage, Karma, Magic, and Cypher. Get together with new friends, Chamber and Mondo. So, yeah, I'll give it, I'll give that one a try, possibly. I think that shadow is Mephisto. Looks like Mephisto's shadow, doesn't it? You got the, the 1970s collar. <laughs> you got the pointy Spock ears. I think that's Mephisto. Um, Mephisto's not a mutant, but um, eh, we'll see. They're going to be takes them into a space alongside the Star Jammer, so I don't know. Maybe that's not Mephisto. Maybe that's another old character that I'm forgetting about that just reminds me of Mephisto. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out together. Uh, X-Force number one and two. Uh, I don't think I'm going to pick this up initially. Um, I don't know. Unless I hear more about it, I think I'm going to pass on that initially. Uh, we got a reboot of X-Men. Hickman. Francis Yu. Doing cover and art, interior art. Um, yeah, I mean, I like how, how I like what Hickman's done so far, so... I'll probably give that um, a go. I don't know how long I'll collect it for. I mean, it has to keep my attention. Uh, he definitely has breathed life into the X-Men franchise that hasn't been seen in quite some time. So uh, I'm very hopeful that that will be good. We'll see if there's anything new in that series. Usually in the first couple of issues, they'll introduce a new character perhaps, or yeah, there'll be something going on there, so sure you grab that on your pre-order list. Uh, Annihilation Scourge. Got a couple nice covers there. Uh, variant cover by Garner. This looks like the Olivetti Ale cover. Pretty nice. Annihilus, or Annihilation, right? Is that the... Oh, Annihilus, yeah. Usually it's Annihilus in the negative zone, right? So... That should be it. Uh, might be worth picking up. Absolute Carnage, number three of four. Or, I'm sorry, number five of five. So this will end the series. Uh, it's been pretty good so far. I've only read the first issue and a couple of the tie-ins. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think Cates is doing a decent job on this. And maybe someone dies. I mean, usually the last issue is definitely worth making sure you grab. So I'll be grabbing the A cover on that for sure. Uh, there's also Absolute Carnage Weapon X, number one, or Weapons Plus, number one. Man, I love that cover by Scan, so uh, it's a total cover buy for me. I'll be grabbing that for sure. I love that cover. Very nice. I'll be grabbing that. Uh, Absolute Carnage Captain Marvel. Uh... So I don't think you need to collect every single tie-in. <laughs> I'll pr I would probably pass on that. Uh, I did pick up Scream, um, Absolute Carnage Scream, and I don't know. I don't know if this is a, a full on. Yeah, it says all new ongoing series. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know much about Clay Chapman as far as a writer. Mooningham I'm familiar with as far as artwork. Um, 
That's cool A cover, I like that. I don't know, we'll see. I might give that a, a, a little try there, see if there's anything that's worthy of continuation or not. Uh, Venom number 20. Uh, Venom overall has been pretty pretty good. It's definitely been the best Venom run in a long time. Um, you've got, uh, notice, I don't think Stegman is doing the art on this, so you've got Ibn Coelho as the artist. Uh, Kate's is still doing the writing scribe on that, but uh, no Stegman, so nice Kyle Holtz cover. Definitely, it's uh, perfect for his art style, I would say. Uh, okay, so let's move on here. Amazing Spider-Man I've not been into. We're up to issue 33 and 34 already. Um, I don't know. Marvel needs to do something about Amazing Spider-Man. It just... I haven't, you know, I haven't heard anybody really saying, oh, yeah, I got to make sure I pick up Amazing Spider-Man. So now they're pulling in a, a Amazing or Spider-Man 2099 into the storyline. Um, you know, maybe that they're trying to breathe, breathe a little life into this book. I, I don't know. So they're, you know, this is what, this is what Marvel succumbed to. They're relaunching a series that failed. <laughs> Back in the '90s, uh, you know all the 2099 books that they had. None of them, you know, none of them went very long. They, I think, Spider-Man probably did the best. Um, the rest of them failed pretty quickly. Um, I have a feeling it's going to fail again, <laughs> but they'll continue to try. Conan 2099. Ugh. Yeah, I think th I think this is going to be terrible. I like Conan, but Conan should not be in the future. I'm sorry. He's a barbarian uh killing savages and dealing with wizards and uh, I don't know. I mean, you hate to be a judgmental prick <laughs> right off the bat, but I just have a feeling that's I think these 2099 titles are all going to bomb. I mean, the artwork right there is terrible. Who's who's doing the artwork there? I know that's not Zercher. That's probably Ron Lim. Is that Lim? Yeah, it's Ron Lim. God, it's ter it's terrible artwork. Yeah, I think I think the 2099 stuff's gonna be terrible. But that's just my opinion. Another 2099. Ah, uh, okay. I like that cover, a Finch cover on Deadpool. That's pretty nice. Was that Deadpool number? Oh, number one. Hey, rebooting again. <laughs> That's what Marvel loves to do. Let's reboot Deadpool. You got Kelly Thompson doing the writing and um, Bocciolo doing the art. I like Bocciolo. I mean, he's a pretty good artist. Uh, I like that Finch cover, so I might give that a... Might give that a, a try, but man, we're rebooting again. This is, God. Uh, all right, Morbius. I like that cover by Ryan Brown. Brown is really getting a lot of work lately. He's He started off doing store variants, um, and now you see him doing more regular uh, cover art, so that's good, good on him. I mean, he's fantastic. He's He's got that... Um, that painted realistic style like a Delato, you know, very similar in that in that respect. But I love that cover of Morbius. That's a must absolute must buy. I will be picking that up. I don't even care if the story's good. <laughs> it could be terrible. Uh that's a total cover buy for me. So I will be getting that. Yandu, I don't think I'm gonna go for Yandu. Yandu has his Interesting outfit there. He's he's got his groin flap. <laughs> he's sporting the groin flap. Yeah, that book looks terrible. That's a total pass. Punisher Soviet. Now I'll give this a try only because it's got Garth Ennis as the writer. Um, I didn't care for uh, Rosenberg's run on Punisher. I didn't think was that good. Um, I think they're ending it at issue sixteen, is what I've read. There's a couple articles. I saw one on Bleeding Cool indicating that 
likely they're ending at in ending the series at issue 16. Basically, I think sales have been pretty low on it, um, and they're they're trying to revitalize Punisher under under a Punisher Max series using Garth Ennis again. So, uh, you know, so, so Punisher Soviet notice it's under the Max series, 32 pages. I'll give this a try. I mean, I like Garth Ennis. He's gritty and definitely can do a good job on Punisher at times. So uh, I'll give that a, a sample. I'll at least pick up the first issue. But notice it's a miniseries, only six issues. So they've also, I think they've also announced that Garth Ennis will be handling writing on the ongoing Punisher series. So after the six issues of Punisher Soviet, they'll relaunch Punisher number one, and Garth Ennis is supposed to be the writer on that. I don't think they've announced who the artist is going to be yet, but... That's what I understand so far right now on Punisher. Uh, Marvel Tales Doctor Strange. Now, I normally i have not been buying these Marvel Tales. Um, but I got to tell you, I love that In Hook Lee cover. <laughs> that thing is gorgeous. I mean, I'll buy it just for the cover. I, I probably don't even care if, to read it. But, uh, you know, this is a 80-page one-shot for 8 bucks. You know, it's reprinting some old stories. Looks like Strange Tales number 110. That's the or, um, the origin of Doctor Strange, or his first appearance, rather. Uh, then you got Doctor Strange from 1968, 169 to 170. So this is basically a reprint anthology, um, 80 pages. There's also a man, Marvel Fanfare 82 in there, number 5, from 1982. Um <coughs> For me, that cover is awesome. So I will be buying it for that in in Hook Lee cover for sure. <laughs> uh, it looks like we're rebooting Spider. Well, yeah, Spider Man number three. So they're rebooting that. That's the J.J. Abrams and his son Henry Abrams, I think. Right. Um, I didn't. I don't think I pre-ordered any of the first couple issues. So I don't know if that's going to be good or not. I guess I'll, I may rebuy it. I may go back and buy it if I hear there, there's been great success with it. But uh, I decided to, to not buy that. Um, Spider-Man Velocity, number one, nice scan cover. Delato cover, right? So you'll, or this is not Delato, I'm sorry. This is uh, Federici, I believe. So you'll have a lot of people buying this series because just because of the covers. Um, I don't know if the... The story's any good or not. Spider-Man's not been very interesting to me lately, so I've not been really on top of things. Venom, definitely. Carnage, definitely. But not really been following Spider-Man too well. All right. Let's move on. I can't look at everything here. Got a Campbell cover by a black cat. That's... I think that series is terrible, but you've got... Lots of artwork, so you Marvel's selling this covers only. <laughs> Doesn't matter if the story's any good. Okay. Ghost Rider. Number two. I definitely love that Crane cover. Crane was made to draw Ghost Rider. I've got some of those... Uh, uh, what was that one? Tears, what was it, Blood and Tears that he did. It, Garth Ennis was writing it, and he had Crane doing the artwork. Oh, man, those were good. I mean, those you can still go back and buy those for cover price or less. It's hard to believe that that series isn't worth more, but you want to see some really good Clayton Crane artwork, man, you got to pick up some of those old Ghost Riders that he did with Garth Ennis as the writer. Man, they were so good. I still have them in my collection. I would never sell them. I just think they're awesome. So I love Crane doing Ghost Rider for sure. Even if it, even if it's just a cover, I would love him to do interiors again. Uh, some of the stuff I'm okay. This one, <laughs> Invisible Woman. Oh come on, what are we doing here? Is it me or is this a sexually suggestive cover? <laughs> oh Adam Hughes, you're so funny. I think Adam Hughes was smoking a big old doobie or hitting the bong really, really hard that day when uh, they Marvel sent him his, uh, uh, we need a cover for Invisible Woman number five. And I think he probably was a little horny maybe. I don't know. This is, 
I think this is the this is one of the craziest covers. I mean, come on. Oh, she's holding a gun. It's obviously you know, representing a penis. I mean, this is just nuts. Uh, I could talk I could make a video just about this cover. <laughs> That's crazy. Maybe I think maybe she's fantasizing that she has a penis. I I don't know. This is this is the craziest. This is the craziest cover I think. The other one that was really crazy that Marvel had was Nick Fury in an action pose, holding a um, a cup of espresso. <laughs> I, I kid you not. That that's an actual cover. Um, he was running or something, and he had a a, a little dainty cup of espresso in his hand. I mean, this is even more ridiculous. Uh, it's just, uh, I really think at this point, Marvel's just like, yeah, Mark Wade's the writer. I don't, know if, I don't know if he had anything to do with this, but this is the most ridiculous cover I think I've ever seen. It, it is so ridiculous. I'm sure I'll get some comments on that. <laughs> I have no doubt. Uh, okay, let's move on. Web of, Web of Black Widow. Uh, what is this? Number three of five. I like that cover. Um, Yoon. Yoon's doing pretty good lately. He's been doing some nice cover work for Marvel. So I like that. Very nice. Get some good Alex Ross goodness here with Immortal Hulk. Number 26. So obviously they don't end the series at 25. I think for a little while there, there was a little rumor that, oh, they're going to end the series at 25 and that's it. They, they are making issue 25 a double issue, 60-page issue, so um, that no, this, is, this one's only 32 pages, so they're going, right, you know, they're going back to the regular format. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, I mean, it's been a good series. I think they need to keep this team together. Ewing, Bennett, and Ross doing covers. Um, you know, I, they're out selling. They've been out selling Batman lately, so that goes to show you there's... They've got a nice formula going on. There's number 27. I don't know about this variant cover. Tom Tom Rainey. I don't know what he's... Is he turning into a lizard or something? Uh, I don't know. Even the tongue has, te it has little teeth. <laughs> that's just crazy. All right. I don't know what that's about, but um, we'll move on. Avengers. What's this? Number 26. Got a nice Alex Ross cover. You got the man with the old old fashioned lawnmower out there trying to cut the grass. Oh, that's pretty funny. Um, going more into somebody's becoming the new. I guess this is the star brand from one thousand. Was it one thousand BC? One million BC? Okay, so eh, I don't know. Uh, I've not been really collecting Avengers. Jason Aaron's writing a lot of books right now. I mean, dude, he's doing Avengers, he's doing Conan. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I think they stretch themselves too thin, maybe. All right, uh, King, Th King Thor. I definitely love that cover by Ribic. Man, that's an awesome cover. That is a nice cover. I could care. You could put absolutely garbage in the in, in the story, and I would still buy this. <laughs> this cover is awesome. Yeah, I love that cover. That is great artwork. That is, I mean, that's good. Ribic is really really good. He's one of the best artists. I mean, sometimes he, I don't like everything he does. I, that Hulk thing cover he did for Fantastic Four. What was that number eleven or twelve? I know, it was terrible. I I thought that was terrible, but. Um, this one's really, really good. He act, it looks like he actually took his time <laughs> on this one. I mean, the muscle, the, the anatomy. This is how you draw really good anatomy, by the way. I mean, this is Frazetta. This is Frazetta quality on the anatomy. Look at the leg, the leg muscles. It's really good. Ribic knows anatomy. There's no doubt about that. Most of the time. <laughs> To, uh, the Fantastic Four, I think he was taking drugs that day. That's my that's my opinion. Okay. Oh, the, another book written by Jason Arian, Valkyrie. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll I'll do a shout out to my good friend Justin Rican. He's been highlighting um, Valkyrie. He's been liking it. 
Um, I I don't know if I'm going to pick that up and read it. I might read it and trade, but um, not been buying the series. Sort of vetoing that whole thing. All right, let's move on. Nice Finch cover, Savage Avengers. Very nice. I like that Electra cover. Pretty cool. Uh, I picked up a couple issues of Savage Avengers. It was really good. No, I picked up number four because of the Zafino cover. And yeah, I liked it. I thought it was I thought it was a good read. I probably should, and I picked up issues one, two, and three second printings. I love those second I like them way better than the first printing. The second printings are like the red covers. Oh man, they're nice. Um I should be getting that in my midtown order pretty soon. So I will have that on my video when I get that box. All right, Captain Marvel number 12. This is probably going to be a pivotal issue. I think this is the character Star. She goes dark. She becomes Dark Star, I think. Um, so probably you want to pre-order that. That probably will be a hot book. Um, there's also, they don't show it, there's also going to be an Inhook Lee connecting variant. I will probably try to buy that as well. Uh, that's a Brooks cover. The A cover is a Brooks cover, and this here looks like a another Yoon cover. Like I said, he's getting a lot of work lately. Very nice. All right, moving on. Uh, Invaders Eleven. I've heard some good thing, some good things about Invaders. It's actually I've heard pretty good. I love I love Butch Geis's artwork. Sometimes that's a pretty nice cover. All right, Captain America, another nice cover by Ross. The Legend of Steve continues. Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't heard anything great about Captain America. I picked up the first few issues on on this run. Uh, I thought it was mediocre at best. I just it didn't really grab me. I didn't want me to continue buying it, so I I kind of gave up on it. Unless I hear something different, unless it's, it's improved, I probably will stay away from it. Old Man Quill, that's probably one of those things I need to go back and buy and trade. I didn't, I've not collected any of the original issues, but I've heard it's really good. Uh, I think Ethan Sachs is a good writer. Uh, I think he, he does a really good job on the um, kind of the Elseworlds. Uh, he did Old Man Hawkeye, which I thought was excellent. I bought all the issues of Old Man Hawkeye. Um, but this could be good. I'd like to at least read it in trade, I think. All right, guys, let's move on here. Um, eh, some of this stuff I'm probably not going to pick up. All right, facsimile edition of Uncanny X-Men 266. Definitely looks like the coloring is... I don't remember... I have the issue. I've got the original. Don't remember the colors being quite that dark. I could be wrong, but yeah. I mean, that's if you don't own that, um, that might be worth picking up. Um, I wouldn't mind buying it and sticking it behind my my original. So if I want to read the the book, I'll pull out my facsimile instead of the original. <laughs> so I'll probably grab that just to make sure I have one. This I definitely want to pick up. Facsimile edition of Tomb of Dracula, number 10. Marquee book, first appearance of Blade, the Vampire Hunter. Or Blade, the Vampire Slayer, as he was known in that issue. Um... Yeah, that would be a grail book. I mean, if I could buy that original in really good grade, I would do it. Um, I think that's a character that's always going to be around. There, you know, there's upcoming movies, so that book's on the move right now. You know, it's, you're not going to find a great deal on that book in, in decent grade. No way. Uh, that that's going to be a hot book for a while, especially when that first trailer drops. Uh, Strike Force number three. I do love that. Um, Covered by Sorrentino. Becoming one of my favorite artists is Sorrentino. Just really some really nice covers. That's that's a beauty right there. I like that. I like the blades in the in the foreground, you know, up front and then the in the foreground as they say, and then you've got the doom in the background. It's pretty cool. I like that cover. Alright, Black Panther, that's a pass for me. Agents of Wakanda, that's a big pass. <laughs> Runaways, nope. Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, it's amazing. They, they're st this thing got to 50 issues. Holy crap. There's a Raza cover. <laughs> I'd like to see what that looks like. 
Oh, it says right here, final issue. This is it. After 58 issues, comics numbering, dare we say, nuts. Okay, yeah. I don't know why, how they come up with 58, but at least in this run, they went into issue 50. Reaches its 50th and final issue. When we say the unbeatable Squirrel Girl's final issue, though, we mean the comic book, not the character. Doreen Green will be fine, or is she? Yeah, the character, they're not killing off the character, although they should kill off the character. Um, believe me, she's quite beatable. The one thing she's beatable in is, is bad sales. <laughs> is You can easily outbeat Squirrel Girl in sales. Um, this book should, have, should not have gotten past 10 issues. But we're living in the world of SJW land and... Hey, we we have to have a strong female character, even though no one buys it. So Marvel will continue to produce a comic book that doesn't sell. And if I'm wrong, go check out Comic Cron sales numbers on, on Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. I don't think it sells 5,000 issues. 5,000? They I don't think Marvel breaks even on a comic book until it gets to at least 10 to 15,000 issues. <laughs> So it, every issue of this run loses money. So goodbye, Squirrel Girl. You Believe me, you won't be missed. <laughs> no one cares about you. Goodbye. All right, moving on to some better books. Daredevil, number 13. Chip Zdarsky's doing a great job with this series. Uh, I like everything about it. I love the covers by Tedesco. Although the Kingpin... The Kingpin looks like he just ate a pizza. <laughs> he's And he's a little ashamed he's 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 having shame and he needs to wash his hands of all the pizza sauce or he may have just killed somebody <laughs> either way it's one or the other but I, I like the expression on his face he's like huh did someone see me eat that pizza i'm gonna kill him <laughs> i i like that cover it's it's compelling I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Leave me a comment on that one. I'm sure that will generate a few. All right, we're, I'm going to skip some books that just aren't selling. I don't know who's buying them. They're being produced for nobody. Savage Sword of Conan. I gave up on that after issue five. I do like this B cover, though. By Juan Ferreira? Fer Juan Ferreira? I don't know. It's a nice cover. I do like the cover. Now this cover, this is the best cover I've seen. This might be my favorite cover so far of 2019. That's how much I like this cover. This cover by Ribic is unbelievable. Look at this, look at this cover. <laughs> I love it. It's just like a stone creature. I don't know what this creature is, but my God, this is some good artwork. That is a masterpiece, my friends. If you want to see a master artist in peak of his craft, this is like um, getting a fresh copy of Vampirella number one and looking at the cover and seeing Frazetta's work. Um, this is like absolutely worthy of Frank Frazetta. This is absolutely gorgeous. I love that cover. So that one, I might, I'm going to probably buy two copies of that. Conan number 11, that ribbit cover is, I mean, am I wrong? Is that, is not, is not that the best cover you've seen in a long time? I love that cover. I'm going to buy two copies. <laughs> the, the B cover by Neil Adams looks like garbage. Compare, I mean, no offense to Neil Adams, but that is, I mean, that is a, a, a masterpiece. This um, looks like a cartoon. <laughs> That's the comparison. All right, moving on. Um, so is Darth Vader fighting Terminators now? I don't, I don't know what's going on here. Those, that looks like a Terminator head. But I guess he's got... Well, he's got robots, cyborg robots going after him now. I don't know what's going on in Star Wars. You got Chewbacca going hand to toe with uh, 
Darth Vader, that could be interesting. Pretty nice, there you go. Not been collecting Star Wars, so you'll have to let me know if you read it, if it's any good. It's a nice cover by, uh, what's her name, Ashley Witter. Yeah, she does a good job. That's be I love The color work in that is awesome. That reminds me of, um, remember Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? And he's the golden, uh, what is it, the, the golden head statue of the local jungle tribe. And he's about to switch it out with a bag of sand. <laughs> it sort of reminds me of. It's a cool cover. I like the cover. All right. Uh, that might be it. The rest are all hard covers and trade paperbacks. So that was your list. This video went 30 minutes. Holy smokes. A little too long there. Well, guys, if you stuck all the way to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. There was a lot to go over. I probably went on a little too long on a couple things there, but uh, hey, what, what can I say? I've had a couple drinks in me and it's late at night. I'm shooting this close to midnight here on Thursday. So yeah, you know, things go a little longer than expected. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Please also like and share my videos. That's how I grow my channel. I'm up to about 469, I think, subscribers. So yeah, I'm growing the channel pretty well. I'm closing in on 500 here pretty soon. So you guys helping me out, I uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, also, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of these books. What book looks interesting to you? Maybe there was something I should have highlighted that I didn't. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments, guys. Look for a video from me tomorrow. I'll have the hot 10 list that CBSI puts out. I'll do my commentary on that. Uh, I might also do another video. Um, I get an email just about every week from Cover Price. They do a top 20 list. I might do a video on that as well. So look for that. I hope you guys have a great uh, Friday tomorrow, and I'll see you probably in the afternoon. Thanks.